Martin Luther King said, the function of education is to teach one to think intensively and to think critically. Intelligence plus character, that is the goal of true education. Respected chairperson, keynote speaker, father rector, father principal, invited guests, delegates, peers, colleagues, friends and fellow travelers, I, Samar Yaz, Assistant Professor, Department of Business Management, wish you all a very beautiful morning and welcome on this journey of sharing, discussing and deliberating through the one day national seminar on human development, contemporary issues and challenges. Human development is development by the people, of the people and for the people. For it is people, both poor and rich, as individuals and in groups, who create human development. So human development empowers people to be responsible and innovative actors. In the words of Mahbubul Haq, the real wealth of a nation is its people, and the purpose of development is to create an enabling environment for people to enjoy long, healthy and creating lives. This simple but powerful truth is too often forgotten in the pursuit of material and financial wealth. I welcome once again the collective expertise gathered here in Tinopoli Hall. Light, God's eldest daughter, is a principal beauty in a building. Light in brightness has always been associated with positivity, motivation and the harbinger of truth. Light also symbolizes the presence of the Almighty in our midst. In keeping the tradition of auspicious beginnings, we will now have the lamp lighting ceremony. The flame to light the lamp is being carried by our Vice Principal, Father Dr. Martin Porras S.J. from the Sarvadharma Samabhav Pranakale, the Sanctum Sanctorum of our college. For this, I now invite our Chairperson, Keynote Speaker, Organizer and Principal of the College, Father Rector and the Convener of this National Seminar to light the lamp. Many blessings. 
and have continuously guided us throughout our educational journey. We make this humble prayer to seek your blessings upon each and everyone present here today. Guide us so that we may be able to share our knowledge and respect each other's opinions. May we also absorb the invaluable knowledge, experiences and put it into practice what we may learn today. We seek your presence and guidance today during our seminar. Help us accept each other's opinion and learn from each other during the deliberations of the seminar. Be with us, guide us, so that we may be able to accomplish our goals. We ask this in, your, in the name of God Almighty. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Ashtan, for a meaningful prayer. I now request the chairperson, Dr. Vivekanand Pandey, to kindly come up on the stage and take his place on the dais. Our keynote speaker, Dr. Professor Vidhir Bole, sir, you are requested to grace the dais. I also invite the organizer of this national seminar, our principal, Father Dr. T. Shan to come and take his place on the dais. I request the convener of this national seminar, Mr. Piyush Ranjan Sahai, to kindly take his place on the days. Thank you, dignitaries. The secret to success is good leadership. And good leadership is all about making the lives of your team members or workers better. I am talking about the leader of the college, our principal, Father Dr. Tinishan Deshe, who hailed as the organizer of six national seminars organized at St. Xavier's College of Management and Technology. He has 13 years of experience in conducting classes on English as a second language. He is a member of the admission committee and driven cell of Aryabhat Knowledge University, Patna. He has also authored many articles of national interest and has recently published a book titled Musahar's A Noble People, A Resilient Culture. Let me now invite our principal for his speech. So, Good morning. Good morning. Namaste. Namaste. It's my privilege and pleasant task to welcome you all to the seventh national seminar ever since we started this college in 2009. Emboldened and encouraged by the success of the last six national seminars, we have taken this year a topic which is very relevant to all of us today human development contemporary issues and challenges. <laughs> human development is human well-being. It's about expanding the richness of human life, the quality of human life, rather than simply the richness of economy. It's an approach that is focused on people and their opportunities and choices. As the international community moves more and more towards this approach to human development is a relevant topic for our country also as the parameters of human development indices of India are rather pathetic be it literacy, nutrition, life expectancy, social inclusion or gender inequality and then required equality. It's my earnest wish that the last and the least of our people enjoy basic Amenities of life and live with dignity as human beings. Enjoy freedom to live the life they value, a long, healthy, and creative life, to be knowledgeable and to have access to the resources needed for a decent standard of living, to have choices and opportunities in life. We have with us distinguished guests to assist us to trigger our thoughts and imagination as we venture exploring the different dimensions of this topic. Permit me to welcome our chief guest, 
and chairperson, Professor Dr. Vivekan Pandey, Pro Vice Chancellor, Amity University, Patna. He has more than 20 years of experience in academics and academic administration. He has authored and edited many books. On a personal note, I have met him a couple of times with regard to Zeve University, Patna. That's our university, for which we are awaiting permission from the government of Bihar. And in this process, we have found you a very approachable and helpful person. We are happy to have you in our campus for this seminar. And may I request Reverend Father Joseph Tadamanal SJ, the Director and Vice President of the College, to offer a memento to him and welcome him. Head of PG Science and Liberal Arts at the National Institute of Design, PG Campus, Gandhinagar. He teaches various subjects of humanities and social sciences in the context of design, such as comparative aesthetics, narrative theories, and so on. Besides being a teacher, he is an author of many books. He is a guide to PhD students in interdisciplinary areas. We are indeed blessed to have you with us and to be enlightened by you. May I request the finance officer, Father Alphonse Casta SJ, to welcome him with the memento. Chancellor, Amity University, Patna, 
organizing committee chair father dr tiri shant desai father lecture delegates paper presenters participants invited guests colleagues and students a very good morning to all of you and thank you for joining us at the seventh national seminar on human development contemporary issues and challenges it's a great honor for me to welcome all of you to st jeyus college of management and technology patna on behalf of the organizers of the seventh national seminar i would like to express my most sincere gratitude for your presence in this inaugural session as the gateway to the initiation of our national seminar we are especially especially thankful to our keynote speaker dr mihir bhole who has traveled from gujarat to patna to grace our national seminar today i am equally grateful to dr vivekanand pandey pro vice chancellor amity university patna who has consented to preside over the seminar many of the dignitaries who are also sharing their time with us in this event have also changed previous commitments in their professional duties to find time to render stimulation and appreciations to this seminar we are indeed honored to have you here with us following the success of seventh sixth national seminar it was agreed that we should meet again at the seventh national seminar the theme of this year's seminar is human development contemporary issues and challenges with many research activities now taking on a global global dimension it's imperative to discuss positive approaches towards inculcating best research integrity practices including examining the role of academic publications in setting the standards for integrity of issues and challenges in the field of human development human development is a process to understand people's freedom choices and opportunities the study of human development seeks to enlarge how and why people of all ages and situation change or remain same over a period of time in the 21st century india has witnessed a slow but steady change in human development progress in human development has been impressive over the past 25 years people now live longer more kids are in school more people have access to basic social services however this is a long road ahead to witness a tangible transformation of society progress has bypassed groups communities societies and people have been left out some have achieved only the basics of human development and some not even that a new development challenge has emerged ranging from climate change to inequalities from epidemics of to disparate migrations from conflicts to violent extremism This seminar will serve as a platform to academicians, professionals, social activists, students and research scholars from all over the country to come forward to reflect upon the theme. The objective of this seminar is to provide a forum for discussion and for exchange of research reports, academic analysis, field experiences, case studies as well as observations on human development. I hope the deliberations and discussions to take place in the course of the one day seminar will provide an open eye approach towards the need for human development in modern society. I hope the outcome of this seminar will be of special interest to academicians and to all of those who believe in people's freedom, choices and opportunity. This is our seventh national seminar and I'm thankful to almighty and grateful to all those who work towards shaping the seminar in closing i encourage delegates to participate actively in the interest, interesting discussions i do believe there is a remedy for everything i wish everyone a very successful and fruitful seminar thank you very much Thank you sir. In the words of Albert Einstein, all that is valuable in human society depends upon the opportunity for development accorded the individual. We have amidst us Dr. Professor Mihir Khole, our keynote speaker for today's national seminar. 
Dr. Bhore is a senior faculty at National Institute of Design, Gandhinagar. He has extensively written and published in various national and international publications, books and research journals, and delivered lectures at premium foreign and Indian institutions such as University of Applied Sciences, Northwestern Switzerland, National University of Singapore, IIT, JNU, Delhi University, to name a few. Dr. Bhole is an author too and has three books to his credits. With the permission of the chair, may I now invite Dr. Professor Mihir Bhole to enlighten the gathering. So. Development, cultural development, economic development, development of design. 
for that matter. So this word called development is something which to me is like a force multiplying. So you can use it as a suffix to any other word. But that it is not only about using it as a suffix, but thinking about the whole concept, what you are going to talk about. What is your whole idea? What your whole idea is? Uh, in the economic paradigm, we all know that UNDP 1990, uh, UNDP report for the first time talked about this concept of human development and then brought into centrality uh, of this whole idea of development, man being at the center of development. A human being at the center of development. Otherwise, the development was only looked at it, uh, looked at from the economic perspective or social perspective. But where was the man? Where was the human being in it? I think it was very rightly pointed out by the scholars, my Google Huck and Naman uh, Hussain, um, another uh, scholarly people, in 1990, way back. And that changed the whole concept, that changed the whole paradigm towards looking at development. And then development was then looked at from multiple angles and it becomes truly interdisciplinary. So as an interdisciplinary teacher, I can also understand that the moment I use the word development in a certain, we also have development of design in a, in a typical, uh, in, in our situation. You have development of technology, you have development of business, you have development of society. But then all these development, if they are functioning as a stand-alone processes, probably they are not able to make the mark on the society. So for that we needed a term, a concept, more than a term, a concept, which could have emphasized, which could have put everything together at one point, bring it to centrality, and then say that yes, this is what we wanted to achieve. So look, when this idea came about, this idea of human development, it was a sort of whole all-encompassing concept. We talked about all the aspects of human life. And more particularly, we talked about empowering people. Empowering people by giving them an opportunity of choice. What you would like to do in your life. And then you can talk about your social theories, social principles of inclusion, of marginal, marginalization, from marginalization to inclusion. And the whole principle of social development and the public policy that started talking about you know, the inclusiveness in the whole system. So then we started talking about inclusive policies and then when we say inclusion, it was something which is very akin to Gandhi's idea of unhuman. And to the last. And this Two beautiful concepts that Gandhi also gave us, Sarkode and Andyore. If you want to, Sarkode means the Uthan of everybody, the rise of all. The rise of all will not be possible until you have gone down at the bottom, until you have hit the rock bottom of the society. And you have brought a change from below, that change must come. And because of all these concepts, beautiful concepts and ideas, which many governments all over the world, in developing developing nations, they started adopting it. Because the earlier paradigm was that look at development only from a very narrow centric approach of economic development, GDP, GMP, and then you say, yes, we have achieved that. We have five percent GDP, we have seven percent GDP, we have double digit GDP, and then development is done. But what are the fact? The fact remained that despite achieving the best of economic, uh, uh, making best of economic achievements, a large section of the society remained impoverished, underdeveloped for various reasons. So money alone is not a factor. Wealth alone is not a factor. Then what is important? What is important is that how do you distribute what you create, how to share, with everybody, what to create, it needs certain amount of compassion as well. And let me uh, digress for a moment because the institutions like yours they have played a wonderful role, Father. I must tell you, I belong to, I am a son of the soil. I know about this institution, St. Javier's, which has done such a remarkable job 
for you know, you know, in the field of education and through education, how we have brought about social transformation. That is also something that must be underscored. And if you don't underscore it as such, okay, this will be doing a great disservice. So your institution has a great role to play in bringing about human development as well. I feel it from the bottom of my heart, and I feel it with great sense of gratitude. That's a great time, my dear friend. क्योंकि मैं पब्लिक पॉलिसी पढ़ाता हूँ और आपके पेपर्स में देख रहा हूँ बहुत सारे एरिया को टच कर रहा है वो पेमेंट के एरिया को भी टच कर रहा है साइकोलॉजी को भी टच कर रहा है इकोनॉमी को भी टच कर रहा है
you can become the change agent if you want to pursue technology. Yes, do that. If you want to pursue design, do that. So these choices are so limited. Girls students, they have limited set of choices. Boys students, they have limited set of choices. Otherwise, fashion design, just imagine. You have institutions like NIMP. And what is the composition of the students, of boys and girls? When you say fashion, you always think, oh, fashion is more feminine, more leaning towards femininity and, uh, you know, women must be much better off. But to a brilliant number of brilliant fashion designers who are men, maybe. So these choices, these choices, which really empower them, and through these choices, development happened. So this whole concept of human development, not only talking about it theoretically, because that will be a different discourse, and I'm not going to touch upon that. Just talking about how broadly it touches our lives. So this change that it can bring about is something which is at the core of the whole idea. So how do we then make policies in such a way that we can help people make the choices and choices for what? And if you look at the policy document of SDI, it just talks about a couple of things which is about health, which is about education, and which is about opportunities and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. so three things. But these three things are not three things alone. This is like a mantra. It is a mantra. And the beauty of the mantra is that it is a codified concept. When you start expanding it, it becomes enormous. So if you just want to talk about education, do you know how big the whole area of education itself is? Because education is related to culture. Education is related to economy. Education is related to gender. Education is related to uh, in, uh, income. Educa education is related to your own choice and so many other things. Education is related to infrastructure. Education is related to policy. Oh my God. Here you have the Pandora box which opens in front of you. So, these three mantras, these three concepts which are part of the mantra basically have opened up a Pandora's box and then we can apply it into different, the same concept being applied into different contexts. From here, I would like you to take a little detour and then talk about what design we do with that. Because that is something which I will be more uh, interested in talking about. So when we say the rule of human design in human development, I also think, incidentally, I developed this month, uh, uh, this subject some months ago, we teach uh, human development and design as um, um, uh, as part of one of our electives under the science and liberal arts. So when I was thinking of it, the idea that came to me that what design does. For most of you, design is something like an aesthetic pursuit, which is about making things beautiful, making things pleasant, making things uh, you know look beautiful, feel beautiful, and it's more about surface ornamentation, look and feel, and so on and so forth. But as a matter of fact, that's a complete misnomer. That's a complete misnomer. Design essentially is a problem solving approach, it's an attitude. We all design, and when we have design, we have design this chair, this, this dials, and all those things, we must have had some problem in the mind. What was the problem? The problem was that a speaker has to come and stand and he has to talk. So, what is the kind of feature that we design? start thinking about it. And this is a solution, this is not a product. So every product is a solution. So when you talk about design, you basically look at it from a different perspective, which is about understanding what your needs, requirements and problems are, and then coming out with the solutions. Now, all of us do that. We all solve our problems in our own way, but does it mean that all the solutions are design solutions? No. All the solutions are not design solutions. All these, those kind of solutions where you have the application of mind, where you have applied your creativity, which means you have thought that how many ways, different ways we can solve a problem. We have option A, option B, option C. So if you have to design something like a glass, a bottle, or things like that, as simple as that, do you think all of us will do it the same way? 
No, why? Why? That's the question. And the question is, the answer is, because all of us think differently. All of us visualize differently. All of us look at our problems differently. All of us perceive our problems differently. So, we had a low time. Right? And uh, the celebrated industrial designs, designer Charles Sims, who recommended for the establishment of uh, NID way back in 1960, when he was invited by the government of India, he made a study the situation of industrial design in the country. And he used Lota as a metaphor. And his celebrated in the India report talks about Lota as a metaphor, where he says that there is one product which Indians <coughs> can utilize for multiple purposes. One purpose, one product, multiple purposes. You can use it for taking bath, you can use it for drinking water, you can use, also use it for puja, you can also use it for as a container and so on and so forth. So one product, such a diversity, which means you have a creative application of mind. So on the one hand, design is about creativity. The creativity can reflect in, 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 in your aesthetics as well and your solutions as well. But is that all? No. Kahani <laughs> Adhikatami. Kahani Do or no day. Once you have made many options, then you have another great problem to decide that which is the best option. He has designed a policy for education for Sapande, and Father has also designed a policy document for education. Mihi Bhol has also designed a policy document for education. But which is the best one? And someone and you has to take a walk. So there you apply the critical thinking of your mind. Which means among the given options, which is the best option? Which can solve this particular problem? That means that his option, my option, and his options are useless. All the options are good, but for this particular purpose, which is the best option? So that is about the critical thinking. The third aspect. This talks about the systems thinking, which is about knowing the part and the whole. What is the relationship between the part and the whole? So, with a little example, let me state you. Government is a system. Government has a chief minister and a governor and ministers and cabinet of ministers and uh, bureaucrats and then down the line you have the entire system. Right? Something has to be done. Where will you address? So you also need to understand that everything works as a part of a system. <coughs> so these three things become so crucial for design, what we call these days, design thinking, quote and quote. Critical thinking, critical thinking, system thinking. They constitute together this whole idea of design thinking, which has become very essential and you should agree with me that in, in the B schools also these concepts are being tested like anything. To, Look at the Stanford document, you look at the Howard document. I mean, design thinking is very important in thinking. So, this gives you a new approach towards looking at the problem. Right? Can you apply this approach for development? Because development is a problem. Development is a challenge if it is not a problem. So, how do you address the challenge of development through can you apply design thinking? In addressing these problems, which means how you make your policies, for example, how you design your policies in such a way that the efficacy, the service delivery, the effectiveness, and everything is at hand. So everybody knows and can do it seamlessly. A friend of mine who used to be uh, 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 who had a background, uh, who came from uh, an army background very senior army person, and now this is working with KPMG and all. So once we were discussing, he said that, you know, when I was working with uh, from, uh, one of the banks, and we had to design the interface of the ATM machine. So the task that we had given to our um, uh, user interface team is that it has to be very simple. Now, behind that simplicity, you have lots of complications. But the point is, when any solution is going to the people, 
The front end has to be as simple as possible. The back end can be as complicated as possible. Nobody cares about it. The front end has to be simple because it is going to be used by all of us. Somebody who is very intelligent, somebody who is very mediocre. So how do you design projects like that? So in terms of development, again, we will have to think of these new concepts, which will give you a whole new approach towards looking at the issues of development. Can you think of new, new paradigms for development which, can, which are based on creative thinking? which are based on critical thinking, which are based on system thinking, right? And then we talk about development of, let's say, women, development of child, development of uh, education, development of healthcare, so on and so forth. These are the challenges. And finally, before I conclude, because the world is also moving into a different direction altogether, all your intelligence is going to be useless after some time because you have something called, quote, unquote, an AI. So I always tell my, my, my colleagues and my students in NIT that your creativity is going to become determined. Because artificial intelligence is being used, you'll be surprised when, to write the script of the films, to write songs, to sing songs, to make movies, and to do all kinds of things that you can imagine. So think of development from that perspective as well. That's the future. Bhavish ho hone ja raha Technology drive karega. Jab technology drive karega, to development ke kya ayam hone. Kis tarikhe se development ko hone ke. Human development ki necessities kaise bade ki. Yeh saari, jo yeh jo saari challenges hai maari saamne pari, contemporary challenges hai. But yes, regardless, nevertheless, the issue of development, as long as human beings survive, the issues of development will change. The nature of development may change. The name of development may change. Today you have achieved development in the field of education. Maybe you will forget about education. You will move on to something else. But who knows, tomorrow AI becomes your challenger. And then you say all your education has become redundant. So your development that you have achieved through the traditional method becomes redundant. So how do you look at the development? So I think while development remains as far as human beings are alive, development will remain as a core, human development will be essential. Without human development, human society cannot be. We cannot imagine a human society as a good. Not only human society, a humane society. Which cares for the human being. Which believes in empathy. The core of HDI is something which is very similar between the concept of HDI, essentially, though not a state, the kind of but which remains common, common linking thread between the two is the word called empathy. And empathy is not same as to sympathy. After two sick is a massa, they can roll on in it. Two sick is a massa, so when you empathize, you understand problem, you don't cry. When you sympathize, you start crying. You have tears falling down your eyes. But when you empathize, you understand the problem very objectively and come out with solution. So human development is basically an approach towards treating the sense of empathy in human beings. So does design. Design also, the whole discussion of design begins from empathy. There's a problem, can you empathize with the problem? Can you state what the problem is all about? And then you move on to the jump to the move on to the solution. So we don't allow, even in a, in a very practical sense, when students come to us with their design solution, we ask them to show the process. Now, how do you come to this conclusion? This conclusion is important. You must have achieved this conclusion based on the processes. So the processes are important. And in that process, empathy becomes the key word. So empathy is something which links design and human development. So whenever we talk about human development, I think probably these paradigms and uh, uh, these concepts will be of great help. Design thinking can be a very noble approach towards dealing with human development and they are being used in most of the, you know, uh, you know what, uh, 
institution and in uh, branches of different uh, disciplines of education, from humanities to social sciences to sociology, anthropology, political science, economics, and also down to uh, management and so on and so forth. So with that, I would like to not take much of your time. Thank you very much for being so patient, so kind. because you invited me to my native place. Thank you, Father, and thank you all the ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, sir, for enlightening us with your message. The key to human development is building on who you already are. We are pleased to have with us Dr. Vivekanand Pandey, Pro Vice Chancellor, Amity University, Patna. He has more than 20 years of experience in academics and academic administration. He is a doctorate in business administration and MBA and an LLB from University of Lucknow. He has conducted a number of workshops for government officials of Doordarshan, All India Radio, Judicial Training Centers and many others. The prime objective of Dr. Pandey as an educationalist is to deploy knowledge towards analysis, synthesis and fine-tuning of the organization and task in order to suit the dictates of the environment. I now invite our chairperson, Dr. Vivekanand Pandey, to kindly address the audience. Sir. Thank you so very much. Thank you. I am deeply grateful for having the privilege of being with you all, the academicians and the students at St. Xavier's College of Management and Technology. I am indeed thankful to Father T. Nishan and Father Joseph for inviting me at campus and giving me opportunity to interact with you all. I am also thankful to Professor Piyush Ranjan Sahai and the hospitality team, Mr. Alok and Mr. Shahir, for giving me wonderful welcome at this campus. As Father Nishant was mentioning, that uh, in 2016 we met for the first time. And it was, yes, related to the start of St. Xavier's University. The very first sentence which I shared with Father was that Father, your institution has been imparting quality education to the students because it is my habit whenever I find the students in groups, I go and discuss with them about academic development and education scenario in behalf. And I really find that the quality of the students at Xavier's is really very good. So I am once again thankful to Father T. Nishan for inviting me to the campus. As the Master of Ceremony has informed you that I graduated and did my PhD from Lucknow, University of Lucknow. Lucknow is the place which where I belong to. And in 2014, I got this opportunity to come to the land of Buddha. Mahavira and Chanakya. And I am really thankful to the citizens of Bihar whom we very popularly, very, in a very friendly manner called Bihari. Uh, one, one line which is, which is written by Shushan Pichha, a very young poet from Bihar, I would like to recite those lines because I would like to pay my indebtedness, I would like to show my indebtedness towards Bihar and citizens of Bihar. Pratham Nagarik Swatantra Desh ke Hue Jis Bhumi Ki Santan Pratham Nagarik Swatantra Desh ke Hue Jis Bhumi Ki Santan Swayam Bhagwan Buddh Ko Jaha Pedh Ki Chhaon Me Mila Gyan ए बिहार की पावन धरती करते हैं हम तुम्हें प्रणाम करते हैं हम तुम्हें प्रणाम I 
I must congratulate the convenors of this seminar because they have chosen a wonderful topic which is very important not only for us but is very important and very relevant for the entire globe, our nation India and most important for the state where we are, the state Bihar. Let me begin my presentation with, with talking about Let me begin my presentation uh, telling you about how important this topic is. But before that, I would like to tell you that we, we just heard Dr. Bhule, a very nice talk, nice deliberation given by Dr. Bhule, where he was talking about you becoming change agent. My dear students, once we have been talking about human development, we have been talking about human and development of that human. And once we talk about human development, it has lot many dimensions included in it. It is a very vast topic. And n number of dimensions are included in it. So I might not be able to cover all those dimensions. Therefore, let me start my presentation with the lines of Michael Legrand. Michael Legrand says, the more I live, the more I learn. What does he say? The more I live, the more I learn. The more I learn, the more I realize, the less I know. So I might not be able to touch all the areas of this particular topic. So please forgive me for that. Let me begin my presentation with a general description of human development. Human development basically talks about freedom and creating opportunities. Talk, talks about improving the well-being of human. It basically has two sides. Creating capabilities and using those capabilities. See, creating human capabilities for improved health, knowledge and skills. And using those capabilities for productive purpose for becoming, being active cultural, social and political affairs. See this slide. Which part of the country is shown here? Which part of the country, please you can tell me, which part of the country is this? It is Korean Peninsula. It is Korean Peninsula, South Korea and North Korea. Your question may be, sir, why are you showing me this Korean Peninsula? Actually, I would like to talk about James Robinson. James Robinson in his article, Why Nations Fail, he has given this example and if in case you see this photograph, you will find that there are lots of light in southern part where there is darkness in North Korean part. Students, if in case I ask this question from you all, you may have various answers. You may say that North Koreans, they are very much environment friendly, environment, environment conscious and that is why they have been not using electricity because they want to reduce carbon footprint. There may be certain students who may say that North Koreans are very romantic and they do not want to use electricity, light, rather they may use candles in evening or late evening. But what is the correct reason behind this? There may be a reason that North Koreans are, they do not have access, much access for electricity and that can also be the reason. This is shown here. If in case you check the statistics of North Korea and South Korea, you will find per capita income in North Korea is around $683, whereas in South Korea it is $33,000. I think now you can understand what exactly I am trying to say. 
The question is why poor countries are poor and why rich countries are becoming more and more prosperous. Another example I would like to give you. Which part of the globe? It is? Yes, you are nearby. It is actually Democratic Republic of Congo. Democratic Republic of Congo. And the road which you have been seeing here, what is the condition of the road? It is their interstate highway number one. It is their interstate highway number one. See the road, I am 100% sure that you won't like to drive your car in this muddy and sand road. And this picture was taken in dry season. Can you imagine once it is rainy season, what will happen to this road? The per capita income is somewhere around 500 US dollars. Now, see HDI factors, HDI rating of few countries. Everyone here, here the last line which is shown in red is of Democratic Republic of Congo. One, one fact which I missed to tell you, this road which you have been seeing here, in 1960, this road was perfectly alright. This road was plain, this road was good. But reaching up to 2010, this has become the condition of the road. See here, these figures, these, these graphs are shown HDI ranking of various, or various countries. I have chosen four countries and I have also written their ranking at the bottom. If in case you see, the ranking of Congo is 179 out of 189 countries. Zimbabwe is the second which I have shown here. These two are downward side rankings. It is 150 out of 189. Whereas I have also chosen two more countries, India and China. India, what is the ranking in 2019? 30, 129. 129th is the rank of India. And what is the ranking of China? 85th. And which country is at the top? Norway. Very good. One quote I would like to share with you all because my intent is to talk about importance of this particular topic. Have you heard about Thomas L. Friedman? He is senior editor in the New York Times. See what he has been writing. He has been mentioning to his kids, their his kids, that his mother used to tell Thomas L. Friedman long back and he has been referring to India. India, when Lal Bahadur Shastri ji was our Prime Minister, uh, somewhere around 1964, he gave one slogan, Jai Jawan, Jai Kisan. And what was the duration when he gave the slogan? That time we fought one war with Pakistan and afterward at that particular time, we were in passage of food grains. And then, Lal Bahadur Shastri ji has mentioned, has requested all citizens to skip one meal once in a week. That was the time period when Pride Man was discussing this with his kids. He mentioned that please complete your food given on your plate. Because if in case you will not be completing your food, Think about the children, the starving children in India who are not getting even complete food. See, that was the situation then. And the positive point of this situation, see here. 
he mentions now i tell my children please complete your maths homework otherwise there may be persons in india there may be children in india who have been studying mathematics very well and they will make you star in mathematics this is our india Albert Einstein see what he is saying we owe a lot to the indians who taught us how to count why is he saying this he has been mentioning this because discovery of zero who gave that concept who introduced that concept of zero aryabhatta and aryabhatta belongs to which part of the country so again i am giving you one chance to join your hands for this stage we have once again i request you to join your hands for one great mathematician who has just got padma shri name of that person is persist narayan saying who challenged i am thankful to you for the great now i am i am coming down to india coming down to bihar what is the total population on the globe around 7.76 billion and we the indians are 1.37 billion around 17.7% in population though the area wise we share only 2.4% of the geographical boundary geographical area moti ji you must have heard he always talks about 125 crore bhartiya हमारे हैं और हम 125 करोड़ भारतीयों के हैं ही ऑफन टॉक्स अबाउट दिस ही ऑफन सेज दैट इंडिया इज यंग व्हाट डज ही से दैट इंडिया इज यंग ही सेज बिकॉज 65% पॉपुलेशन इज बिलो 35 इयर्स एंड अराउंड 50% पॉपुलेशन इज बिलो 25 इयर्स डू यू नो डू यू नो that bihar is more young than other other parts of the country because the persons who are below 35 years in india rather i should correct this line below 25 years in bihar are 58% so bihar is more young than other parts of the country so the responsibility for human development is much more on the the bihari see the fact is world is aging if it needs you check every one person out of six persons in the world will be somewhere around 65 years in 2050 if it needs you check median age in 2050 i am given here korea will be somewhere around 56.5 years japan 54 years uh, germany 49 years us 41 years but if it is you check india in 2050 the median age of indian would be 37 years after india i am coming to the other part if it is you check median age of southern region southern states of india you will find that kerala 31 years goa 30 years tamil nadu 29 years andhra pradesh 27 years though the bihar median age is 20 years and by in 2050 you will find that one third 20% of population in southern states will be somewhere around 65 years age then they will be requiring persons who can provide them all services and then it will be a dividend demographic dividend for the states like bihar who can go not only to the southern states but on the entire globe to give them to provide them their services but in order to do that particular job i think you understand that you will have to develop all those skills 
which are dictates of the environment on the globe as well as India. Another data which I would like to share with you all. As Dr. Thode has mentioned that education plays a big role in human development. If in case you see this data, this data is gross enrollment ratio in higher studies, in higher education institutions, as well as per capita income of those states. See, the southern states, at the same time you have to keep in mind the previous data, that the southern states, they are aging. This data talks about gross enrollment ratio. Telangana highest 37%, whereas nation's ratio is somewhere around 26-27% and then if in case you compare Bihar, you will find it is 14.5%. 14.5 and if in case you check per capita income, the income in southern states is much higher than our state Bihar. So this particular topic which has been given, which has been proposed by the seminar committee, I am really thankful to them and request you all to please join your hands together to thank them for choosing such a wonderful topic. Who is he? Bill Gates. And what is he saying? He says my biggest disappointment with India is the state of its education. And at the same time, I have mentioned three more names. What are those names? Sundar Pichai. Okay. Uh, whether these names resemble that they sounds like they are Indian names? And where are they? Are they in India? No. So that is another problem which we have been facing, which Dr. Bhole has also mentioned. Very recent uh, study in Bihar, done by one scholar, this Smita Anand. I think she, she is pursuing, she has been pursuing PhD from the Raga House. She submitted one, one, you know, one, I mean, uh, uh, previous, one pre-submission thesis to the department, where she has mentioned five reasons for development of Bihar, why Bihar is not developing. And out of those reasons, one reason which she has, she has mentioned was migration from Bihar. All the icons, heroes who have done really great things, they are from Bihar, but today they are not in Bihar. Bihar is that a state who has developed one entire country name as Fiji. After coming to Bihar, I have come to know that in Scotland there is one place which is called Patna. There is one place which is called Nevada, uh, somewhere nearby California. These are the information which has come to me. But the reason why Bihar is not developing because all the persons who are role model in Bihar, they are out of Bihar. So the time has come when you will have to think about all these things and will have to work together for the development of our state Bihar. Another discussion, another, another small discussion in between Nandan Neelkani and Tata Sons Shepherdson Raj Sekaran. They both have been discussing and talking about higher education, mentioning that we need to redesign the higher education system. At the same point, I have mentioned few other things, if in case you can see, a very latest report which has come in the month of January on engineers in India. That report says that only 4% engineers are good enough in technical, cognitive and language skills and only 3% are good enough in latest technologies like machine learning, data analytics, AI and mobile development. So, time has come when we should think about all these things. Who are these two personalities? Anyone who can identify? 
I'm coming to the end of this presentation. Who are these two persons? Bill Gates and who is the second one? Carlos Clem. Have you heard his name? Carlos Clem? Two, two countries, US and Mexico. US and Mexico. If in case you talk about economics, uh, I mean, economic statistics of US and Mexico, you will find Mexico is far, far ahead than, uh, US is far, far ahead than Mexico. See, another data I would like to share with you all. Somewhere in around 2013, Carlos Slim was much ahead than Bill Gates. And if it is I talk about Bill Gates and Carlos Slim, Bill Gates has started. Oh, what is the name of the organization of Bill Gates? <laughs> Wonderful. He is into computer software development and has been giving opportunity, has been giving incentives to each and every one in equal manner and has been motivating all to join his organization and contribute for the development of that organization. On the other hand, Carlos Slim has been into creating monopolies in telecommunication market and monopolies once you are creating, they never open opportunities and because of which everyone knows Bill Gates and hardly anyone knows Carlos Slim. Carlos Slim has become eighth richest person in the world. But the difference between Carlos and Bill Gates is of leadership. Carlos from year 2005 to 2009, he has created lots of wealth. But that wealth creation process has actually made one big dent on the economy of Mexico. Economy of the Mexico, particularly national income, has started going down by 2% every year from 2005 to 2009. And see the condition of US and Mexico. US is far, far away than Mexico. Very recently I visited one school. There I saw this particular quote was mentioned. Knowing is not enough, we must apply. Willing is not enough, we must do. Do for what? Sarve bhavantu sukhina, sarve santu niramaya, sarve bhadrani prashantu, maadarshit tirpadbhave. Thank you, thank you so very much. Thank you, sir, for an informative speech. Now, the house is open for an interactive session. I request our chairperson, Dr. Pandey, to kindly initiate the interactive session. We will have few questions. I invite, I invite you all, if in case you have any query related to this, today we are, we are really fortunate that we have one very renowned professor from MIT who has talked about design. Whenever we have been talking about design, we basically talk about form as well as function. So we have one renowned professor from MIT and we have a panel of best persons, so I invite you all that if in case you have any question related to this topic, please ask your question. Anything which is under the sun, you can ask anything. 
And though, 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 I, I am follower of Michael Legrand, that the more I live, more I learn. More I learn, more I realize, the less I know. So I cannot claim that sentence. Please, uh, your, your queries are welcome. <laughs> Sir, I wanted to ask that uh, Vicky was talking about how artificial intelligence and technological development is taking over. The, what I feel is that at the core of human development are human beings, but if we let technology take over everything, if we uh, let artificial intelligence do the design making of films, if we let artificial intelligence design the music, are we not going to lose the inherent human characters? Are we not going to lose the skill development intensity of us humans? My name is Rajvi Prabhakar. Excellent question. And uh, I think the, the point that you made is something which has been raised, this concern, it's a concern, which has been raised by uh, many people who have been on the forefront of uh, technology. Yeah. Yeah. I think this is a very um, interesting question and a very pertinent question looking at the development which are happening these days. And uh, it's not only us who are feeling uh, in front of all this, but also the people who are at the forefront of technology these days. You see, you have other mask and you have many other environmental minds who are talking about the problems which might arise, uh, you know, and uh, we probably may not be in a position to handle all those things. Uh, because once you, it's like a genie coming out of the bottle, that's a big problem. So artificial intelligence, the biggest problem with artificial intelligence is that, you know, humans have a capacity to to reason and to make calculations and all that, which is based on our neurons and all that. So our neurons are basically physiological phenomena. So we can make certain kind of uh, combinations and then all of us have a range which is fixed. So we cannot think beyond a range. Say for example, if you are good at mathematics, you may not be good at poetry, may not, not necessarily, right? One who is good at poetry may not be good at mathematics and economics and so on. So our mind works like that. But when it comes to artificial intelligence, uh, it is some, there is something inherent in the, in the process itself, which is, which makes it learn faster and becomes a self-learner. So with every mistake, it can learn something else, and it can make further models and models and models after one after the other. Then it becomes super intelligent, and that super intelligence, if it goes so, sometimes people you know who are very scared they also raise these questions. Uh, this question that just imagine if uh, uh, it's something which is done by uh, artificial intelligence goes beyond our control, what will happen? So if we decide that we should destroy it, that machine has already made all the calculations that if I do all these things, these are the possibilities that I will also be destroyed. So it has taken a preemptive. That's the biggest problem. So it's like, you know, opening a genie out of the bottle is very risky. So Elon Musk has uh, cautioned the uh, uh, scientists about that. Stephen Hawking before passing away has cautioned the society. I mean, the great threat that we may be facing. But having said that, we also need to keep in mind that human society, the way it has evolved, there are certain things which we think are autonomous, which are uh, thing which we think is our, is our, our control, but there are certain things which are beyond our control that are more autonomous. So these are the developments which are very autonomous in nature. So unless we, we, we decide that to what an extent we will allow that to happen, I think we should be very, very, very careful. But you can also use it in certain areas, which are very essential that human minds, human capacity has a limitation. Say for example, outer space, new kind of technology, new kind of intervention in, in uh, biogenetics and so on and so forth, which we cannot uh, handle it so properly, but probably machines can help us in that. But the result only comes once you have the application. So through applications we learn. 
the mistakes that we do in application we learn and then we can change. So yes, this is a challenge, but uh, we should be cautious rather than being panicky about it. Thank you so much. model which has focused on wealth, wealth creation and the world is becoming more and more unequal. The concentration is huge. The deprivation is a mass. Now when it goes to that level then national, nationalism takes over. So think of the nation first, your education next, your healthcare next and means what? When I want to speak for my right, it comes to the nation. When it comes to your wealth, it becomes the globalization. How do you address this contradiction, sir? Uh, yes, sir. Thank you for again. And uh, you see, uh, any kind of development paradigms or theory that we come up with has uh, have their own inherent contradictions from Marxism to Socialism to Nietzsche's philosophy and Hegelian philosophy and so on and so forth. Every philosophy is, is, has a limitation of its own. What is our, our problem is that we try to think any idea that comes to us as the ultimate idea, the most utopian idea. But the problem is that then we get fixated in time. Every solution is a solution which is which evolves in a certain context. So when Marxism happened to the world, it evolved in a certain context, right? But when the capitalism took over, it also happened in a certain context. Because of capitalism and this, you know, laissez-faire economy concept and this un 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 uncontrolled capitalism, we are facing certain problems. But if you look at the overall economic development per se, and because of economic development, the other kind of development that is contained. If you are thinking of, let's say, development in the field of education, development in the field of healthcare, development in the field of infrastructure, yes, that's fine. But you need to have a good economic base. So that economic development itself becomes the basis for many things. But having said that, economic development alone will not be sufficient. In design, we use a term called wicked problems. So most of the problems these days are wicked problems, which means you cannot just address it from one perspective. You have to look at the problem more holistically, right? So if you are addressing the economic aspect, you also need to look at the social aspect, the cultural aspect, the political aspect. Our problem is that we get we are driven by certain kind of ideas and ideologies which look at solutions only from a certain very narrow perspective. Either it is political or economic or social or cultural, and hence. We have the problem. So unless we are able to understand the nature of the wicked problem and try to find answers which are more interdisciplinary, more multidisciplinary and more broad based, I think uh, no, it will be very difficult to come to a conclusion. Yeah. Very 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 We need to have inclusive institutions rather than extractive institutions. And, and in this regard, I I'm really sorry, I can't see you. Uh, no, no, somebody here to talk this talk. Oh, you are talking, yeah. Yeah, please go ahead, yeah. Oh, you are talking, okay. Oh, I'm sorry, you are talking. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank I thought there is some questions. This girl has asked one question that was related to what was the technology which you were talking about? Definitely, I am asking this question. Artificial intelligence. What is the first word? Actually, it is artificial, it is not natural intelligence. You have natural intelligence and that is artificial. You have created that intelligence and you will keep on doing that. Don't worry for that. Another question was related to capitalistic and democratic society. Sir, uh, usually business persons nowadays have been becoming extractive business models. We have to create inclusive business models which, which should also think about entire society, development of not only their business but entire society. Government has, has made one, I mean, has, has taken one step 
uh, asking them to respect two percent for CSR, but that is not sufficient. We will have to motivate them to think in that manner. And in this regard, again I would go to Dr. Bole. Dr. Bole was mentioning that St. Xavier's is that institution which is not only imparting education to the students, but it is also giving best to the society. Once again, you can take this opportunity to give your hands for the One more question we would like to take. Any student or faculty member, please, one more question you would take. Uh, you used three words that talked about that was creative thinking, you talked about critical thinking, and you talked about system thinking. And one more thing that you talked about was development, keeping in mind empathy. So you correlated these three words. When we talk about human rights, it's based on these empathy principles only, on the basis of which we do this. So how do you correlate human rights? with awareness about these human rights and then again leading to human development. Because, sir, uh, I also heard an interview of late Mr. Kofi Annan where he had mentioned that we know what is to be done and we know how it is to be done. The problem is now we need to stop thinking and we should proceed with regards to what is to be done. So I request you to please guide me as to how is human values related to this awareness about human values and human development. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> one, one set of answer can be very politically loaded and uh, it's a very political surcharge environment in India these days, so I don't really want to stop it. Yes, human rights. Uh, I tell you something, I have a different take on that altogether. You may agree with me, you may not agree with me, and uh, we should agree to this. Right? You see, I have become a little averse to this term called rights, quote unquote. Because this has become the source of most of the problems that we are facing these days. The reason being, unless you talk about your rights alongside duties, it makes no sense. This is what Gandhi talked about. If you look at his seven cardinal principles that he, seven or nine, whatever the number is, under ten. He talked about the duties first. So it's through duties, your rights, you earn your rights. You just can't assert your right without doing your duties. Our problem is that these days, we are just asserting we have right for child, we have right for women, we have right for uh, this, we have right for that, we have right for language, we have right. Oh my God, but where are the duties? So human rights are essential. Even for, even for, for maintaining basic human rights, even for nurturing this whole this part of human rights, without which we cannot survive. Yes, I agree with you. I'm with you on that. We will have to embed in the process somewhere this concept of duty, what you have done. Think of that first, and then that your rights will follow you. Our problem these days are that we are certain too much for our rights without even taking care for, of what we have performed, what we have given to the society. St. James is not talking about its rights, but St. James is performing its duties for us, and the rights are following. Shantini the same. Many other institutions have done the same. On all those institutions, all, all those individuals, all those organizations, have been, who, who we have really made a part of the society, are, the more, are those kind of institutions who have not talked about all these things, they have performed their duties much more diligently than a certain other life like that. But as I said, I totally empathize with you, agree with you that human rights are at the center. But ultimately, whatever we do, we do it for the society, we do it for the human beings. So that there has to be, that it has to be at the center, at the core of the whole discussion, all the discussion, whether it is the economic discussion, whether it is economic philosophy, whether it is the social philosophy, whether it is the cultural philosophy, whatever it is, human rights are at the center. Right? If you deprive human beings of their basic rights, makes no sense. But then, at the same time, you also need to sensitize people to think a little bit. Let's say, even 20%, 25%, 40% of 
how the duty is there. Otherwise, we will be all asserting for our rights and we will be all confronting each other, we will be all, you know, uh, uh, creating a havoc and chaos because, your, because whenever you assert my right, why do you assert your right? Because there is somebody you think is against your rights. So uh, you create a binary of sorts. Those who have rights, those who do not have rights. So I think does not actually function like that. We need to look a little more compassionate. And then uh, in terms of rights. Yes, human rights are very important, but then along with rights, this is. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So next we have come to the conclusion of this first session of the National Seminar on Human Development, Contemporary Issues and Challenges. Finally, I would like to tell you all, because I find that this seminar hall, majority is of students. Students are sitting here, so my only message to the students is, you need to focus on three A's which MIT has adopted since beginning academics, application and attitude. These are the three A's which you need to focus. You need to learn whatever your teachers have been teaching you in classroom with, with a song of Hindi movie, Sata Hug. This should be the song which should be on your tongue, uh, on your, on your I mean, your way, you should ask your teachers, sir, madam, whatever you are teaching, whether that is useful to me or not. If in case it is useful, in what manner I shall be using this in future. Sada hak and thirak. But once I am saying sada hak and thirak, it is a little arrogant. Then comes third A, attitude. You will have to develop a very humble and polite attitude. You will have to have that behavior which you do with your parents. Similar behavior you will have to do with your teachers. And with that humble and simple behavior, keep on asking from your teachers, Sada Haan. Yes, Thank you, sirs. And thank you all for an active participation. The best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of humanity. With this, we come to the end of the inaugural session of the one-day national seminar on human development, contemporary issues and challenges. I now invite Assistant Professor Ms. Arunhi Anand, Department of Business Economics, to propose the vote of thanks. A warm and graceful morning to one and all present here. Anu Bhatra, Kripu Yantu Vishwatan. Let noble thoughts come to us from all directions, says Rick Veda. Respected Chairperson, Dr. Viveka Nankate, learned keynote speaker, Dr. Professor Mihir Bhole, Respected Chief Organizer and Principal of the College, Father Dr. T. Mishan S.J. Convener, Mr. Pishwan Sahar, Distinguished Guests, Scholarly Delegates, My Colleagues and Dear Students. It is a rare privilege to be part of such August gathering as this. On behalf of the Ladies College of Management and Technology, I express my gratitude to you all for becoming a part of this national seminar. I thank you giving us an opportunity to pick fruits from the tree of your knowledge and to share with you our own academic and research endeavors. I thank the college management for hosting this seminar. Many thanks to the administration team for the infrastructure and logistic support. Special thanks to the conveners and the team of professors who work tirelessly for making this event come true. I once again thank you all for joining us in this seminar 
and welcoming to this festival of knowledge. And as the motto of our college says, let the spring of knowledge flow. Thank you.